Katie Porter was grilling oil and gas executives in regard to these corporations, these fossil fuel companies getting leases on public lands in order to do their drilling and their fracking. And she's sick of it. You can tell she's sick of it because this time, as she always does, she brought along props. These are unique props. I love the props, but she also brought that fire with her as well. So let's watch. Mr. Summers, there are 7,700 permits unused. How many acres of public land are already leased by fossil fuel companies and not even used yet? Just available or drilling whenever you decide. Congresswoman, again, I think you have a fundamental misunderstanding as to how this process works and the time and resources. Reclaiming my time, reclaiming my time. The answer is 13.9 million acres. To visualize how much land that is, if each grain of rice were one acre, that would be 479 pounds of rice. The American Petroleum Institute even opposed pausing more leasing on our lands. They even sued to stop it because apparently this acreage wasn't enough. Mr. Worth, you serve on the American Petroleum Institute's executive committee. Do you support a pause on new oil and gas leases on federal land? We're about to get to their answers in just a minute, but no more Mr. Rice Guy. Okay. Oh, I'm so into that. Zinger. I'm, I love it. I love it. It gives me life, especially in a moment when I have so little faith in Congress. It's nice to see that fire. Yeah. I. Anna pointed this out while we're watching the license plate says oversight. Mm. I love it. So she did several props. Look, I hate goofy politicians and I've seen them use props in the most ridiculous, dumbest ways. I remember Mike Lee did this thing with a Reagan on a dinosaur with a machine gun. It didn't make any sense at all, right? But her visuals are excellent because it's hard to envision all that much land. Uh, you know, to give you a sense of God, how much land is that? And when she does that visual, you're like, oh, I get it. That's a lot. She did another thing. We got more for you guys, but she did another one in this set of hearings with M and M's, and she uh, talked about how much how this Shell was bragging about how much they put aside for renewable energy, and then she filled up this uh, cup with M and M's. Okay, mm -hmm. this clear jar with M and M's. And then she demonstrated how much they put in for renewables, and it was like this much, <laughs> okay? Because that's what the actual numbers are. She did right. it based on the numbers, and she's like, "So, are you saying that this is like transformative?" And she's like, <laughs> "All right, that's putting thought into it. That's caring about your job, and that's showing the American people in a way they can understand it, and holding the powerful accountable." If every representative was like Katie Porter, oh my God, you know what we'd have? We'd have a democracy. So this oil executives, gas executives, they play this little game, this trick. And I'm sure you've seen some of their commercials where they're like, we care about the environment. That's why we're investing in this and we, we're gonna be uh, carbon neutral in, in this year. We, you know, we support actions for climate change. No, obviously they don't. And what I love in this next part of the video is how she's asking them point blank. Do you support ending these leases? And here's what they had to say. Congresswoman, access to resource in this country is essential to ensure the energy security of our country and- Reclaiming my time, Mr. Lawler, do you support a pause? The administration and it's our- it's our hope that the that the uh, pause ends soon. We think it's important to go forward. My time. Thank you for your answer. The answer there is no. Mr. Woods, do you support a pause on new federal and gas leases? No. Ms. Watkins, do you support a pause on new federal and gas leases? No, I do not, because I think it's important. You already have 13.9 million acres. This is equivalent to Maryland and New Jersey combined. How much more do you need? How much more acreage? You have two of our 50 states at a price that makes the Louisiana purchase look like a ripoff and you're not even using it. What more do you need? Iowa, Colorado, Virginia? Our public land belongs to the American people, not to big oil. When you lobby and you sue so that you could take more of our public land, you're saying too much is never enough. The American people are tired of this charade. Mm. 
I okay, love it. I want to give you two more pieces of context there. Uh, number one, if you're wondering why she keeps yelling at them, reclaiming my time, uh, it's not just that she's being a tough prosecutor, it's that they usually have very limited time. So a lot of the witnesses run out the clock, they yep. filibuster. So they'll give you a long answer, and a lot of the other politicians totally let them do it. Not Katie Porter. She's like, reclaiming my time. Love okay, it. I Love gotta it. get through this, yeah. and I gotta hold you accountable. Oversights on my car. Okay, so. <laughs> And now the other piece of context is how unprecedented this is. Yes. I've been covering politics for a quarter of a century and these people try, you know, come in and out and they laugh at these uh, politicians because nobody ever holds them accountable. Yes. Cuz these corporate executives run Congress. So that's why they're always shocked at what Katie Porter does. They're like they look around like, "Wait, didn't we buy all of these? Oh, she doesn't take corporate PAC money." Damn it. Okay, and so the first person I saw doing this effectively was Elizabeth Warren. And so some of you wonder why, hey, you were an Elizabeth Warren supporter in some ways, right? And I ultimately wound up endorsing Bernie Sanders in 2020. But the reason why I thought about Elizabeth Warren, because I saw her doing this. Mm -hmm. And Katie Porter is good allies with her as well. And and Warren, I know for a fact, when she first did it and they went into caucus, the rest of her Democratic senator colleagues mm -hmm. yelled at her and said, how dare you? That's our funders. You're gonna cost us money and you're gonna cost us elections. So that I want you to understand the courage that it takes. Because to me and you, we love it and it, sounds, it looks like why doesn't everybody do that? The reason they don't do that is because there's a world of pressure in Washington from the donors. But then that also leaks into the Democratic colleagues who yell at you saying you're hurting all of them. No, you're helping the people you need to help the most, the voters. So thank you. And I want to note something that's really, really important. Katie Porter is a congresswoman representing Orange County, California, which used to be further to the right, but now is more of like a purple district. And I bring that up because while the corporate media would have you believe that Joe Manchin is stripping the reconciliation bill of all the popular provisions because he's a senator from a red state. No, it's all BS because clearly these are issues that resonate with voters across the board. And right here, Katie Porter knows that holding corporations and their greed accountable is something that actually represents the best interests of her constituents, whether they're Democratic voters or Republican voters or independent voters. And and her voters love it. While moderate, so-called moderate, in reality, conservative and corporate Democrats lost all over the country in the last election, Katie Porter won in a purple district because she fights for her voters. Exactly. Not complicated. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR, so those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.